Our next story is about the global chip war. We've been telling you about it, about how chips are now a strategic asset and how countries want to control supply and production. And by countries, we mostly mean the U.S. and China. They want the control. Basically, the U.S. wants to cut China off from the chip industry. So it's been putting restrictions on Beijing. And this, of course, impacts China. But it also affects global chip manufacturers, the companies. It affects them too. So they have to look for alternatives. And a number of countries are vying to be that alternative. Vietnam, Thailand, even India, all of them have thrown their hat in the ring. But guess who is winning this chip war? Not America, not China, Vietnam, Thailand or India. As of today, it's Malaysia. An old player in the chip-making game, though not talked about so much. Malaysia is fast becoming a favoured destination for chip manufacturing. Companies are pouring in billions of dollars. Intel, for instance, is planning to invest $7 billion in Malaysia. German, German chip maker Infineon is bringing in another seven. NVIDIA, the company at the forefront of artificial intelligence chips, will spend $4.3 billion in Malaysia. There are other firms as well. Austria's at &S, Texas Instruments, Ericsson, Germany's Bosch, America's LAM Research. All these firms are investing in Malaysia. They're pouring money into three regions in particular. Penang, known on the tourist circuit for its beaches, and the nearby states of Kedah and Perak. Now, these areas are drawing in the who's who of chip makers. The obvious question, I guess, is why? Why has Malaysia become the go-to destination for semiconductor investment? Well, because it has a head start. The chip war may be making waves now, but Malaysia has been a chip-making hub for more than half a century. Yes, that long. Intel set up its first overseas factory in 1972, and this factory was in Penang. Malaysia had courted the firm aggressively in the 1970s. It offered them a free trade zone, meaning tax breaks. Malaysian labor was also relatively cheap. The country is a former British colony, meaning an English-speaking workforce. And there was the convenience of a shipping port nearby. Now, all these factors won Intel over. The company agreed to set up shop in Penang. And that created a foothold for chip makers. 52 years later, Penang and its neighboring states have become a chip hub. Intel was followed by AMD, then Hitachi, then HP, Hewlett Packard. All these companies have been investing in Malaysia for decades, making Penang one of the first Silicon Valleys of the East. But here's the catch. The first chip manufacturing jobs in Malaysia were not high tech. It was bottom rung assembly work the back end of the chip-making supply chain. Malaysia was chosen for grunt work, and this has persisted for decades. Only now is Malaysia being considered for more advanced manufacturing. The new $7 billion investment by Intel, it is for advanced chip, chip packaging, for something called 3D packaging. And this is something new for Malaysia, but the country was chosen because Intel already has a presence there. They worked in Malaysia for years, which is why it, it was preferred to, say, a Vietnam or a Thailand or even India. That's why Malaysia was picked. It's a classic case of first mover's advantage. Malaysia took a gamble in the 70s. They may not have guessed how, how big or how crucial chips would become. But they decided to bring in the foreign investment. And now, half a century later, Malaysia is reaping the rewards. But that's not all. There's another side to this as well. Apart from good foresight, this is also about shrewd politics. Because Malaysia is friendly with both the US and China, it champions something called active neutrality. So it's getting investments from both sides, the West and China. Mainland Chinese firms have been setting up plants in Penang. They're worried about further U.S. sanctions, so entering joint ventures in Malaysia is a way for them to skirt restrictions. The U.S. won't ban chips made in Malaysia. It already imports more than 20% of its chips from this country, more than its imports from Taiwan or Vietnam or anywhere else, 20% from Malaysia. So Chinese companies hope that if they make in Malaysia, they can get around American embargoes. And Malaysia is happy to play both sides, get investments from both rivals. The question is, is this sustainable or will this blow up in their faces? We'll have to wait and see.